Well, good morning, my brothers and sisters. I look forward to this time that we're going to share this morning. <clears throat> I have something that um, I think is extremely important to all of us as we go through this time of, I guess we can call it seclusion um, <clears throat> from one another and from the world, so to speak. Those of us that have jobs that we can actually go to every day, we're not quite as secluded. The rest of us are shut up in, in the home <clears throat> and just spending time with each other, our families, which is wonderful. And we really need to be taking advantage of that time. <clears throat> but as I was asked to record another devotion, uh, I was seeking the Lord on what would really be something that would be helpful to the body of Christ, that would be encouraging, and yet at the same time be thought-provoking and spirit-provoking, <clears throat> so that when you hear this message and you hear these scriptures, that you go back and that you reread them and that you fall on your knees and you spend time with God asking him uh, what he needs to show you. And I think it's, it's very, very important. <clears throat> you know, over the last few days, I've been intently listening to different Christians and what God has been telling them through this whole coronavirus world shaking. And the, the consistent thing that I'm personally hearing in my spirit and what others are starting to really hear <clears throat> is that God is using this as a shaking. God has taken the whole world <clears throat> in his hands and he is shaking the world. All our idols have been cast aside. Everything that we think in the natural realm is important, God has removed it, taken it away from us. And I believe that God is shaking the whole world. I believe God is using this as a last opportunity for repentance, for the lost to come into the kingdom of God. <clears throat> and God wants to use us, the church, to reach those. But I think that the church has to get to a place back to where in the book of Revelation where we get back to our first love and I think a lot of us in the church I'm just gonna say it this way I think the church as a whole has lost its first love we have let so much of the world and ungodly influences come into our churches and into our Christian lives that we have got desensitized to the, what the Spirit of God really wants to do. <clears throat> and I think that we all need to get back to our first love. So with me saying that, uh, if you have your Bibles, and I pray that you do, uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, I'm going to read something from chapter 3. And just a little bit of background here. The Apostle Paul is encouraging a young pastor that was going to be the pastor of the church at Ephesus that was surrounded by paganism, ungodliness, all kinds of evil and wickedness, heavy persecution, <clears throat> anything that could come, any kind of a fiery dart, any kind of a, a temptation, anything to make you quit and walk away from the kingdom of God, Timothy was facing those things. And the Apostle Paul, who mentored Timothy, had some encouraging words, and they were actually some of his last words before he went on to Rome and was beheaded for his faith. And <clears throat> I'm going to read in uh, chapter 4, verse 7, one of the things that the Apostle Paul said. He said this, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. 
So the, the question I have to everyone that's watching this, to all my brothers and sisters, and before I can say this to you, I have to look at myself. I have to look at myself in God's mirror and ask myself, have I, have I been doing everything to keep the faith? Am I running the course with everything that I've got? <clears throat> Is God first in my life and everything? Or am I still holding on to one or two idols that I want to continue to have in my life? It's time that we cast aside the idols. It's time that we get to the place where the Apostle Paul was, where we can actually say, I have fought the good fight. I am fighting the good fight. I am finishing my course until I hear the trumpet sound. And I am going to keep the faith regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the criticism, regardless of what anybody else has to say. I am going to keep the faith. I am going to get back to my first love, which is my relationship with Jesus Christ. And I am going to witness. I am going to preach. Jesus saves and Jesus was crucified to take away our sins. We need to get back to our first love. But here's some of the encouraging words that the Apostle Paul gave Timothy. And I'm going to start <clears throat> with verse 14. So Paul's telling Timothy, he says this, But continue thou in the things which you have learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom you learn them. And from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scriptures. God's Word. The Holy Scriptures. Which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture... All scripture, every bit of God's word is inspired. God breathed on the word. God breathed on the writers of the word. There are no mistakes. Don't listen to skeptics and atheists and agnostics. God's word is perfect, given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, the woman of God, may be perfect, thoroughly finished unto all good works. Brothers and sisters, it is time to stop playing games with God. It is time. Right now, God has shaken everything. God is keeping you locked up in your house. You have no more excuses to say, I don't have time to read God's Word. We have the time. God made you the time. Spend time in God's Word, getting to know Him, and seeking God to know what His will is for your life. So whenever God stops the shaking and things go back to normal, we need to be praying. We need to be praying that God was going to move in, in the miraculous and the supernatural. People will be healed, divinely healed, where no person could be glorified. It's God that does the healing. People will be saved. People will be filled with the Holy Ghost. We're going to go, I, I hope and I pray that we're going to see revival come back into churches and that the community is going to have a hunger and a thirst for righteousness and to get back in a proper relationship with God. Christians need to get serious and take this time as a almost like when God stopped time for Hezekiah. He stopped time. He stopped the clock from moving. He gave Hezekiah 15 years back into his life. We need to take this, that God is going to give us the greatest opportunity we have ever experienced in our lifetime. Nothing like this has ever happened before. 
Let's take advantage of it. Let's use it all, every bit of it, for the glory of God. Put your pride aside. Put all the idols aside. Put everything aside. Empty yourself. And pray the prayer that Isaiah prayed. When he got to the place where he cried and said, Lord, here I am. Here I am, O oh God. Use me. Use me. That's my personal prayer. And I pray, and I pray that all of you, my brothers and my precious sisters, whom I miss dearly, I miss and I want to hug all of you. I pray that you use this time to draw closer to God and let it be a personal revival that shakes you from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head and let it all be to the glory of God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Until next time, folks, I love you. I love you in the Lord. Bless you. And let's not fear. God is, is in control, and he is going to do something wonderful if you'll let him. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.